are watching West Harper Community yeah. Television. You're watching West Harper Community Television. You're watching West Harper Community Television. For the community, by the community. Hello and welcome to Art Talks. I'm Joanne Bauer, the host of the show, and we're here with three artists. Again, this month, these are artists who will be showing, who will be displaying their work at Open Studio Hartford. Today, I have with me Kara Stimmel, George Herrick, and Susan Scott. Welcome. And thank you to our community uh, for this opportunity to have the show. Kara, what I want to do is start with you and talk a little bit about where you're going to be located uh, during the Open Studio Weekend, which I should first say it, the weekend itself will be November 16 and 17 from 11 to 5. And bef before I turn to you, what I actually do want to do is show folks, some, give them some kind of sense of how amazingly thorough and enormous this event will be this time. I'm looking here wow. at the brochure. It's about 200 artists in close to 20 venues in Hartford, but also we have a group called West Hardisons that will be in West Hartford. Well, that's new. It is. So there are the old sites, uh, old meaning the traditional sites of, of course, art space, and the cult building which has been part of it in the past mm -hmm. and now right has returned right mm -hmm. from the beginning yeah. 24 years ago this yeah. is the 24th annual and then we have newer venues such as the where you station which is a great it was the first year last year and it was the first year I did the show and it was fabulous to be in that old station and to see the works that were done at turn of the century and it's part of what I do with my art because I like old recycling materials and that, that's right so, so i should say kara that you're a jewel you make jewelry yes and so being in the great hall at union station the mm -hmm. the historic train station is as you said very mm, perfect and r resonates i would think yeah. with it, your it, work it's like traveling back in time which is a lot mm -hmm. of what i do with my work i take pieces that i repurpose that is from victorian era and there could be broken clocks or a brooch that someone wore and it doesn't work anymore for today's style. So it's, it's gathering all this stuff together to try to create a story. And my, the people who buy from me, they enjoy, they, they write their own story even though I have mine in my <laughs> mind. But, and it's fun, it's a lot Absolutely. of fun doing. You, in some ways my art is similar to yours, mm -hmm. not that I'm working at all in metal or jewelry, but the assemblage part, the Absolutely. collecting, the finding mm -hmm. of the found materials, and then amassing them according to mm -hmm. a story, mm -hmm. a mental story that, or, and I think sometimes to a balancing of how you want, how you see these pieces coming together. You brought some great pieces with you today, and I see you're wearing some this also. This is my queen bee bracelet. This is, oh my goodness, this is worthy about. of our queen bees. I have a lot of ladies who really are queen bees, so. That's why. <laughs> right. Why shouldn't they be jeweled up and ready to go? Now, I'm not totally certain in, in the prep materials that I've looked at. Are you, would you consider yours one of a kind, or do you They're repeat limited certain editions, limited? Um, mm -hmm. Because I use found objects or mm -hmm. certain things that can't be replaced because you run out. They don't make them anymore. Mm -hmm. There's always something different with each piece. Um, there are certain things that are American findings, which I, I support because we don't manufacture enough in this country and we have beautiful beautiful things available to us right. so I use it in my pieces and 
For me, this is quite a statement. I mean, I think if you're wearing that bracelet, you mm -hmm. hardly have to wear anything else. That's right? true. <laughs> That's very true. And the nice thing about, like, it's hard to say that jewelry is art, but art is how you put it together and Absolutely. the thought that creates it. Even though I use skills from when I manufactured jewelry, that's just the craft of it to make sure it works, that people could have it forever. So. Absolutely, and we should say that um, certainly there will be so many art forms during Open Studio mm -hmm. Weekend, mm -hmm. and some that we consider more craft-like, and some right. that we consider more art, right. but it's all under the umbrella mm -hmm. of the art fo form. So we will have jewelry, and there will, of course, be painting. There'll there will be ceramics. Ceramics and yes. sculpture. Yes. There will be fiber art, mm -hmm. of course, collage, mm -hmm. and, and, and in addition, I see that there will be some creativity related businesses too mm -hmm. so there will also mm -hmm. be people who deal in right. creativity yes. more than actually producing mm -hmm. or creating the products for us to purchase it is a great time of course to be making purchases in November before the holidays and that's mm -hmm. one big piece one big part of open studio weekend is that we'll have chances to shop mm -hmm. but you also different from just going to a retail place, you also get the opportunity to talk with the artists, in some cases to watch their process. There will be, I see, a demonstration, uh, a drawing and painting demonstration at mm -hmm. one of the, of the sites. So coming back to, to your jewelry for a moment, Kara, what, what do you think, how do you think someone purchasing an item is attracted to your piece and do they tell you stories? I imagine you've heard some stories over the years. Well, because it is before the holidays, mm -hmm. people are looking for a special gift for somebody. And when they connect with something, they're able to say, oh, Aunt so-and-so, she will love this. She loves bees or she loves honey. And it, the fun part is you get to talk to your customers. You are able to tell them what you're thinking and they give you ideas. And it's a great mix when you do shows like this. You're not just shipping it somewhere and hearing back. The first-hand information that you get is just wonderful. I, 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 I agree. There's so much of that mm -hmm. interactivity. At one of the very first, one of the early open studio mm -hmm. uh, weekends before I ever considered mm -hmm. myself an artist, and this goes back to the 80s, I was enthralled by one of the collage artists and she took so much time to talk to mm -hmm, me and this was at mm -hmm, the cult building mm -hmm. itself and it's, it's inspirational. It really well, is. I think part of art is really what other people think of it. It's the conversation that mm -hmm. starts, that builds a story and it draws somebody in who might not be creative mm -hmm. to be creative in what they're thinking. We all have a form of creativity. Right. So. I, think, I think that's very true. And of course, George, you, you are quite inspired by stories, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I was reading that also you have uh, shamanism as part of your background. So mm -hmm. would you like to tell us a little bit about how you create, how you think about it, what's brought you to some of these images? Sure, sure. Um, well, you, you may have noticed that I signed my work, you won't be able to see it on camera, but I signed my work Lashaway, which would have been my last name, if, except that my grandfather was adopted. And Lashaway is actually an Algonquin name. I, I was assuming that, yeah. it, that it would. And so the, the lineage died out with, with my grandfather. Well, more or less. <laughs> uh, I'm here. Right. But, um, but the, I had always been drawn all my life to indigenous stories and indigenous cultures and the mythology and so on. And never really knew why until I was in oh my, my 30s when I, when I first heard the story. And I said, well this is too important not to pay attention to. And so as a way of honoring that part of my lineage, that's why I signed my art Lashaway rather than my given now, name, has Eric. It changed, ha, has your art changed specifically in relation to you understanding that tradition and that heritage? It did for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, clearly, I had a very 
uh, Native American people would say, a very Native American kind of, of um, look or feel to my work. I used a lot of feathers. I did a lot of oh, yeah. collage work at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and masks and so on. So yes, for a period of time, definitely. Um, but, you know, we evolve. We have new things to mm -hmm. say. And, um, and so I went through a period of dancers and a period of angels and now I have a lot of um, mm -hmm. uh, Buddhas and, and sort of Eastern influence mm -hmm. in my in my work. So it evolves because we evolve. Absolutely. Now some of your pieces here in the studio, for example the one behind you, I would say are more abstract than having specific images. Mm -hmm. Here we have some is is this a, is this a Buddha face? Mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. Yep. And could you talk a little bit about the colors and the and the inspiration here, the texture to also? <laughs> it it's very difficult for me to identify or to pinpoint inspiration, okay. because it just shows up. Okay. You know, um, I, I, I'm looking at your jewelry and I'm saying. Oh, now that flower would be perfect mm -hmm. in a painting right about here. <laughs> and, you know, the, uh, it would. The beads. <laughs> I, I really love to do. I don't know if it's in this. But yeah, I love to do faux turquoise. Uh -huh. um, and so, you know, painting some beads mm -hmm. and so, so the in, the influence and the inspiration can come from anywhere. Right. Now, ha I'm just curious. This question is just coming to my head. Have you ever done collaborative work with? someone like a, a jeweler? A few times. Uh-huh. Um, and although I had fun, and I think the other person had fun, there's something about the creative process, unless you're in performance, there's something about the creative process mm -hmm. that very often uh, is, is, I want to say, too personal. To, um, I can understand that, yes. Yeah, I it's mean, we can talk. It's not a shared talk. experience. An artist is a very, s you do it by yourself. So, yeah. And it goes whatever way it's going. Yeah. Because you're taking it there. I mean, in, in performance, it really is a team effort mm -hmm. most of the time. Right, uh, right. But, but visual arts and, and, um, and other forms of art, pretty, pretty individual. And I... I totally understand that. I, I would say the same thing, except that one time, so many years ago, decades ago, I took a creativity workshop and through a meditative and musical process, we then had partners that we were creating with. Mm -hmm. And this blew my mind because the woman I was working with would draw a line and it was the exact line that I was thinking mm -hmm. of. It, something happened that we were totally I I in sync mm -hmm. around creating this piece. So <laughs> Well, it's that, interesting that, that was, you say that yeah. because, um, you know, I'm also a life coach and so I give a lot of workshops right. and so on. And, and right. just last fall, uh, about a year ago, uh, I gave a workshop up in Massachusetts where part of the process was a collaborative, uh -huh, right. creative effort. And everybody came together, you know, it was like everybody was finishing each other's sentences, so <laughs> right. to speak, but visually. Right. Um, but it's different in the mm -hmm. studio, it really is, it's or at least yes. I find it to be. I agree. I, agree. I, I want to just make sure that our audience knows what a life coach is, and then we will continue with the talking about the differences. Sure, well, when, when people get uh, stuck, in a relationship, in their job, in something, and they want to they want to make some changes and move on. A life coach helps them do that. So you and would be a person a to, to come see. Yeah. Right. And certainly for me, I, I would think that the process of creativity really helps people over or through the, those transitional times. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, you were saying that everyone is creative, and they really are. Um, it's um, coaching is a creative process in itself, mm -hmm. but it mm -hmm. also draws out the creativity in, in whoever mm -hmm. you're working with. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, magic happens when mm -hmm. people are able to tap into their own inspiration mm -hmm. and realize that they've got capabilities mm -hmm. and, and abilities within them that they never knew. Mm 
uh, or had long forgotten. Now, when we talk about Open Studio Hartford and the Open Studio Weekend in particular, again, that's going to be November 16th and 17th, so many of you all will be in, in your own spaces. Actually, I'm not sure if the three, I guess the, maybe not the three of you, but you've, you've had that experience of going to some of the spaces, mm -hmm. right? Especially in art space, it's four floors mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. of a capacity to visit people in their studios. And we were talking about what happens in the studio and how it's individual. Will the attendees get a sense of what goes on in a studio? Is that part of what happens during Open Studio Weekend? I know um, for myself, I always like to, if there are facilities available, I always like to be working on something so people can see me engaged in making art. Um, and I plan on working on some small pieces at the Dirt Salon. Um, if we could stop there and okay. say the Dirt Salon <laughs> is one of the venues, right? Yes. And that's going to be, that's on Bartholomew Street, yes. correct? Yes, it is. Yeah. And that will be ne near some other venues. Just referring back again to the map here for an, an instant. The, the venues seem to cluster. Mm -hmm. And so to think about, for me to think about 18 or 20, locations it's a bit overwhelming but I think if we think in terms of the clusters and see artists that are nearby and then maybe the next day see another clump of artists mm -hmm. at art space of course with the four floors there I think there are about almost 70 artists yeah. uh, exhibiting so that's a good place if you want to feel overwhelmed by creativity <laughs> <laughs> but Susan you brought with uh, with you um, a panel that really shows how you work on a daily basis um, actually, this I wasn't planning on showing this this year. Um, this is part of a daily practice I started mm -hmm. on January 1st. Mm -hmm. um, my work is called The Weather Project, and it's about um, the atmosphere, it's about nature, it's about our world and the daily changes through seasons, through different times of day. Um, that really fascinates me, and I'm interested in art and nature and science, so this is a wonderful body of work for me to explore. Um, I had been doing a lot of series of larger paintings, and the end of December, I thought, I need something different. I need to break out. I need to, to shake, shake something around for myself. So um, what I decided to do was to take on a project of doing one small piece of art every day. Um, they were supposed to be drawings, but because I'm a painter, they quickly became <laughs> like little paintings because it's hard to resist putting color in. But um, I now have um, 293 small pieces. Um, each day I will do one piece. And um, what I wanted to do was just bring in a sample of um, some of the work. Um, and these go, what happened, which I didn't expect, is these turned into, as the year progressed, a visual journal. I hadn't expected that to happen, but when I lay them out, um, I see that all the places I've been, the times oh. of year, the different things I've seen, the moods, either my moods or the landscape or both, the weather, everything is reflected here. Uh -huh. And um, I never realized how strongly where I was, my location, my physical location, and what I see affected my work. Mm -hmm. And this, this is something I've learned through this project. Right. Um, and it fascinates me. And I like working in the small square and I like doing one a day because what it does is, like this, this tree, I have four panels here. This is a tree that I could see out my studio window in the winter when we had so much snow, you could hardly go outside. And this is just the bare branches. But I have maybe another 20 views of this tree. Um, what I like to do is take something, take one view or one idea and then work it and find all the different ways that I can treat it, that I can think about it, um, the different moods, the different colors, um, different times of day. So I, I go into it and explore what's possible. Um, these were the winter trees. This is um, Bluff Point Marsh out in um, Bluff Point uh, State Park. So you have uh, you have four there, Susan. That yeah, are related, and then another four. That yes, are, mm -hmm. and these are um, these are uh, beach scenes. Um, one is two are short beach here in Connecticut, and the other two are Nantucket views. And then I have four night skies, um, and I'm 
there are many more of each of these, but what I found is that through the year, um, there were certain, um, certain locations that really called to me that I wanted to explore more deeply. So though, though I may have been other places, um, I've got runs of series, like the Nantucket series, I think is like 60 of them. Um, I've started on Night Sky, and because that's really started to fascinate me, I'm taking an astronomy course at Central just mm -hmm. so that I can learn more. It's cosmos, and I'm loving it. Um, science doesn't always show up in my work, but it's in my head. It's mm -hmm. something I think about as mm -hmm. I think about art and as I think about um, what I'm actually seeing in front of me um, with always an eye to trying to strip it down to the essentials, to just how, what it feels like to me, mm -hmm. what my perception mm -hmm. is, um, how, how much, how little can I put down or how much can I take away before it is the essence of that moment. And that's what I'm constantly working for, um, just to make it very simple and to help people see what I saw in that moment. And then they interpret that in their own way. That's so, so interesting. Now, did you feel liberated, constrained, or what, by working in the four by fours? I felt so liberated. Um, I loved it. Um, this is another one of my pieces here. Um, I usually work between um, maybe 24 by 30 to this, this is 12 by 12, and I've done some larger pieces. But this, the whole idea of this year was to go somewhere else. In fact, I did a series within this series called Somewhere Else. Uh -huh. um, but the freedom of this small space and to use, um, there's oil pastel, there's gouache, there's um, some acrylics, there's pen and ink, there's graphite, um, all kinds of mixes of all those media. Um, so I am really playing, I'm exploring each day, doing something different, no rules. Mm -hmm. I can do anything mm -hmm. I want. Um, except the size, right? You're except going the size and that I have to do it every size. day. Right. <laughs> But, Could you um, talk a little bit about gouache and graphite in case some of our folks aren't as familiar as they would be with acrylics maybe? Oh, um, gouache is a water media um, and I would say to explain it simply it's um, more opaque than uh, watercolor. It's, it's a thicker consistency but it's not acrylic which is more a plastic consistency, the acrylic. Um, so you can make it very thin so it's like watercolor or you can use it more thickly. Mm -hmm. um, and I do, oh and graphite did you say? Mm -hmm. Graphite's <laughs> just pencil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the mm -hmm. fancy word for pencil. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, um, what I've done is um, isolated certain themes during the year that keep recurring to me, certain locations, um, certain views that really interested me. and one of the things I was hoping out of this 365 days were to find maybe three or four or five good ideas, things that I would then want to expand into larger series in 2014. Mm -hmm. And that has definitely happened. Um, unfortunately, I don't think I can stop doing this either. <laughs> <laughs> so I've already thought if I'm going to do um, a vitamin A, vitamin A is the name for this project, and vitamin A is A for art. So it's vitamin A, one a day. <laughs> one a um, day, right. But I think next year I will do it again, but I'm going to keep it more simple. I got carried away with myself. Um, but I'll probably stick to um, more simple drawings, pen and ink, graphite, just to do that as I work on the larger pieces. But it's been a great exploration and a great discipline and very, very freeing, um, you know, creatively. Uh, when you were talking about coming back to the essence mm -hmm. and, and simplifying and reducing to the feeling capturing the essence, yes. I was thinking, Kara, of your pieces, which in my mind are the opposite, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Um, it's very true because She's going in the opposite way to simplify, to pare down, and I tend to choose to go above and above to just add as much jewel and glitter as possible and create my balance. Now, how so, do you know when a piece is finished? <laughs> um, sometimes they're never finished, but they are finished. <laughs> so, so would would you? I think it's would a balance. You add, do you add? Do you take something out from? 
a year before um, that you created and said, oh, well, I found something new, maybe I'll... Or, I, or does jewelry not lend itself to that? Jewelry, well, first of all, in order to... You want it to be wearable. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> so <laughs> you could have all to one side, but I tend to like a statement to one side, and that's the artist balance, uh -huh. to try to... It's like doing a, a mobile. But it's the one that you wear because another thing about oh. doing jewelry is if you drop it on the floor, it gets tangled. Yeah. So my jewelry has to be constructed in a way that things are linked in a way and I don't glue, I rivet my pieces oh, so they don't fall apart. But it keeps its shape that you could always pick up something and get ready to go out. So, so it's all the things, that's the only part that's not the um, being the artist, it's being the practical artist, because you want people to wear it and enjoy it for a long time. Well, I would imagine, George, do you have to make practical considerations when you, or not, when you think about your, your audience or think about who might purchase, where they might put the art? That is such a great question. <laughs> and um, any answer I come up with, I would be making up. I <laughs> essentially... Essentially, for me, it's a dialogue between me and the painting. Mm -hmm. And so I have an idea, and um, I hate to anthropomorphize it, but the painting has an idea. And the whole process is a dialogue between the two of us. Mm -hmm. But and you so do it, sell. I do you sell. You do sell. I do sell. Well, the discussion never ends, you see, because... Uh, you know, I'll have an idea for the painting, and then the painting has an idea of what needs to be expressed uh -huh. next. Uh -huh. That's just how I put it. I mean, uh -huh. right. I'm not no, hearing the painting that. talk. <laughs> 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 but then, uh, then the viewer comes in and sees the piece and may see something that, that I hadn't really had a personal um, connection to. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, but that becomes the whole story for them. So now right. the viewer has... Uh, you know, adds their piece to the story. And I don't know about how, how it is with the two of you, but sometimes when, uh, when somebody comes in and, and sees one of my paintings and wants to know the story behind it, mm -hmm. I'm so resistant to tell them because I'm much more, <laughs> I already know my story. Right. I'm more interested mm -hmm. in their story. What they see. You know, more but I get it. And so I'll, I'll, mm -hmm tell people my story, but I always want to hear their story. Of course. Well, we have only about a minute left. The time goes fast, but I think that you've provided a great taste for our audience of Open Studio Hartford. I want to just make sure that I say the website, which is openstudiohartford.com all three words spelled out, openstudiohartford.com. And the first event, which is open, free, and open to the public, will be the reception on November 7th. That's Thursday evening, 6 to 8. And at that point, folks can come, and they'll be able to see your work, right, in the in open, um, um, in art space gallery. Yes. If you're in art space gallery. I thought that every artist would be included. No, I don't think in so. In the past, uh, I yeah. think, but maybe we have... Well, maybe there are way too many this time. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I, I think that in the past, they've tried to get a representative piece from all mm -hmm. artists. Mm -hmm. So that's at 555 Asylum Street. And let's see, anything else that we need to... The shuttle bus. Oh, thank such you. a oh. wonderful mm -hmm. key ingredient to seeing as much as you can. You don't have to worry about your car. Right. It takes you from one location to another, and you could plan your day accordingly. So it's a really Absolutely. nice added There will feature. be free, free shuttle buses circulating every 20 minutes or yes. so. Yeah. And the parking in every location, almost every location, is free, mm -hmm. um, or $5, maybe yes. in two of them. Well, I want to thank you very much, and I want to thank our camera people, and I want to thank community uh, television of West Hartford and thank the audience and we'll see you again next time. This is Joanne Bauer for Art Talks. <laughs>